So it was while I was following my interest in the electric universe theory, listening to a, a web-based seminar at which Walt Thornhill uh, was speaking, that I first heard about Eric Lerner's um, work and his contribution to the electric universe research. Uh, this led me uh, to buy a book he wrote in 1991, which, when I read it, gave me a, a firm impression of how the universe could have developed. On page 243, he showed a fu focus fusion device, or plasma gun, um, to which he had been introduced in 1974. That's the plasma gun. You can see a central uh, brass cylinder, and in this form of it, a complete uh, cylinder around the outside, connected to a capacitor at the input, which is discharged uh, from a very high voltage to produce uh, that plasma effect. And knowing from uh, his work with the electric universe theory that the most useful feature of plasma is that it's totally scalable from laboratory dimensions to the size of galaxies. And he was able to scale down his calculations to find the power that would be produced by an eight inch diameter plasma gun that he could build in his own laboratory. Because he wanted to develop a fusion reactor without all the problems of conventional nuclear power stations um, using fission and also without those uh, of the infinitely complex and expensive tokamak fusion reactors being discussed and developed around the world. We're, of course, uh, talking about uh, the ITER tokamak. Um, it, it's uh, often called a donut, because that central shape is like that. And uh, that's intended to capture a, a ring of plasma right <coughs> on the centre and uh, that project was started in 1978 by the world leaders of the time, which happened to be Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan and uh, Gorbachev. Uh, they signed the agreement in 1978. It took them three years before the project actually started doing things. Uh, the plasma gun, by contrast with the tokamak, uh, was elegant in its simplicity. You can, that's, a side, that's, that's a, an eight-storey building, high, um, and very, very complex. And they don't even know when it, uh, when it is finished whether it's going to work in a way that they can use it. Uh, whereas that has to force the issue, the plasma um, uh, gun does it automatically, uh, and every time it discharges the capacitor, it does the same thing. Um, he's used standard nuclear physics for all his analysis, which shows the potential for fusion by this method. The advantages of using the focus fusion technique with, with hydrogen boron uh, are huge. Um, I've mentioned it's very low cost. The next most important difference is that the output of the FF1 dense plasma focus device with, high, with um, hydrogen boron is in the form of a pulsed high power an electric jet of ions and electrons which can be picked up directly by a copper coil around the jet. Uh, the ultimate um, uh, intention of this device is to make it pulse like that 300 times a second. That's but all the experiments he's done so far are single pulses. But he's getting every pulse perfect. It's a, a brilliant piece of uh, iterative development following your nose and making it perfect, getting over whatever obstacles you find. Oh yeah, this, this is a, a, a picture he took with his um, high-speed camera. Uh, uh, you can see the left, the left picture is the uh, original plate, but then a close-up of the plasmoid. It shows the individual uh, little uh, bright uh, spots. Uh, in that tiny thing, which is only 150 microns across. So it's three, three times the thickness of a hair on your head. That's the size of that jet. And, and pulses from that, 300 times a second, will produce 5 megawatt power. <coughs> and he sees that the need for massive power stations in the country will be lost 
for the simple reason that you won't need them when all small towns have one, two, or ten around their periphery feeding the whole of a local area with power and all connected to the grid, which is the same as it is now, but with a scaled-down capacity, uh, you could provide the whole country with a distributed power system um, and that avoids the uh, enormous losses of, uh, through heat in the cabling. So it's a much more efficient uh, uh, distribution system and of course it's relatively earthquake proof because if you knocked out, out one or ten you've still got all the others that you can tap out of. The, compared uh, with the Ita Tokamak, it's many years away from completion despite the astronomic amount of money spent on it so far. Each device is expected to cost about £12 billion. Um, and even though its fuel cost will be very low, assuming it can make its own uh, tritium for nothing, um, the, the current estimate for it to be powering our grid is 2040. And quite frankly, that's obviously far too late to solve the energy problems the world has now. Well, having thought that Eric Lerner has got the complete answer to our uh, electricity problems or energy shortage, I thought I'd better have to see, have a look on the web to see what was happening in the background elsewhere. And something made me to look at cold fusion, which um, ev everyone will remember uh, when in, uh, in 1978 uh, Martin uh, Fleischmann and Stanley Pons, who announced to the public uh, and the world press that they had definite proof that fusion was possible at low temperature. And they did it to the press because respectable peer-reviewed journals would not publish it because it was considered impossible and went against the accepted science. Since uh, then, uh, many researchers had followed the original method, improved it and shown how it could be made to work both reliably and with a higher output under the more acceptable name of low energy nuclear reaction. In the last few months, some of these people have emerged from obscurity and have revealed their work. In fact, when I first looked up cold fusion, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, because the web was alive, and that made me realise that um, uh, giving this paper on this subject was getting me in deep water, because it would be out of date uh, if I didn't follow it every day, and I spent so much time following it every day, I didn't have time to write the paper. So it, it, it's... Uh, anything but finished, and all I'll be uh, ending at today is where we are now. But two years from now, um, it'll be a very different story. Um, anyway, among those who were stimulated to try their luck with cold fusion experiments, each following their personal hunches on how it might work and how they could stimulate the reaction to give more power, were two people with very different approaches on whom I will now concentrate. Luckily, they're the first two people I found. Um, since then, there are at least four times more who are contenders. Um, and these two were Dr. Randall Mills of Blacklight Power, and more recently, Andrea Rossi of the Leonardo Corporation. Dr. Mills, that's him. That company was formed in 1991 as Hydrocatalysis Inc. In the early days of this development, um, he was reported to be working with hydrogen, nickel and other catalysts. And he, and he presumed from the changes um, uh, to some of his chemical elements that fusion was in, involved. That's his grand unified theory of <coughs> classical physics. Three books which you can go on your computer and you can download this evening. <laughs> before they get pulled <laughs> so I've, I've got copies um, I've had a look at the first one and very very well explained uh, right from first principle but um, the second the cover of the second book that shows the DNA the structure in the human body um, he's used it for chemistry uh, that's his elemental table. You see the normal things at one, two, three, four, four that way. And you can see um, the hydrogen at the top left. And you've got various smaller hydrinos, which is hydrogen divided by two, uh, 
hydrogen divided by uh, 3 and 4 and all the way up to 137. <laughs> Maybe when I've read the book I'll know why it's 137 and not 138, um, which science says is impossible. Um, but astronomers with their special telescopes have actually seen these frequencies in space. <laughs> so it's there. And uh, I, I'm a, uh, uh, an experimenter in, in my work. And if I can make something work and I can prove it, then I know the theory behind it right. Because he's using his theory, he's developed software that uh, is phenomenal in its impact on the pharmaceutical industry, the plastics industry, and many others. Uh, he's forecasting batteries um, that could give a hundred times the power from the same size uh, that, than we've got now. Uh, light bulbs that will uh, give ten times uh, or more light uh, for the same current going in. Um, it, it's phenomenal. Um, uh, he's produced uh, high power machine designs uh, and there's his electric car with a CIHT cell drive and look at the small size of the hydrogen tank he's got in it and uh, that will give enough power to drive a car and he says that one litre of water will drive a, a car 1500 miles That's Andrea Rossi, um, the, the Italian entrepreneur, and uh, I only found about Andrea Rossi a month before he had to give a demonstration with his one megawatt system um, on the day of October the 31st last year. And uh, he got a customer that was promising to buy it if he could demonstrate that it worked. Um, and. Uh, he wanted it demonstrated uh, producing half a megawatt of power without any electricity going in at all. But he was allowed the electricity to power up his uh, test in the control instruments that uh, have to be used with it. Um, but he monitored it in every way. And the, the, the customer uh, was in fact an American, a senior army officer, um, who was an expert in uh, this sort of thermal work and he monitored the process, saw the demonstration, bought it straight away and ordered another 13. <coughs> and he was charging, uh, I think, 2,000 euros, no, 2,000 dollars per kilowatt uh, installed. So multiply that by one megawatt and that's what he got for that. And uh, he got 13. That gave him the money to do what he's done since. Um, he, he announced he was going to make a domestic model, 10 kilowatt, for everyone's home to fit to their boilers. And he was going to sell it at a, uh, an unguaranteed price, but he, his target price was $500. That's $50 per kilowatt, which compares with £1,000 per kilowatt on a solar system. So uh, that, that's, he's my sort of man. He's got the right objectives. Uh, and he said if he got uh, 10,000... Uh, acceptances for this uh, within uh, 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 a short time he would set up manufacture. Um, he set up manufacture within a month um, and, and uh, the latest uh, I've heard he's now got two factories he's building in America and Europe to make these devices. Uh, that's the inside of his reactor, so you can see all the individual 30 kilowatt units he's got inside, all plumbed in together with a common hydrogen supply. Um, Blacklight have sold now 8,000 megawatts of power. And my estimate from what I've seen on the web is that they're charging something like a half a cent per kilowatt hour uh, for, from their franchisees, who are the electrical industry, big uh, electrical utilities, and they're taking, uh, they're re-equipping their power plants with this instead of their old coal burning or gas burning system. When they uh, worn out, they just replace it with one of these, which will go on for 30 years. And so, and he gives them the designs so that they build it themselves. So they know all about it, they know the catalyst, but they're not telling anyone, they're not fools. They don't want anyone to know they've got it. Brilliant. 
um, who only appeared on the web, uh, to, to, my, uh, to me anyway, about a couple of months ago. So I had to add to my lecture and change it to include this. But uh, they had some rather interesting things. They were not using catalysts at all. They found another way of doing it. And that's the one thing I've noticed in this, that all the people coming out seem to be having slight variations on the scene, but they could all be using exactly the same background theory. But these pioneers have all got their own theory and they think theirs is right. They don't want to admit they're using someone else's for commercial reasons. Uh, and there's another one, also Italian, because it seems there's a ring of people in North Italy that got involved, and they were all talking to each other, and half of them were prof professors in universities in Italy, and they were all doing what they shouldn't have been doing, and in, in their master's time they were uh, doing experiments uh, that were, again, conventional. We got to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Where will this be? In a, I would say in, uh, in two years, um, three of these people will be uh, in the market. The other two will probably have dropped out um, and the course will be set. Um, Eric Lerner has the chance of, of being one of the leaders only if he speeds up. I think he's too late because these others have got into the market already. And it's like a salesman's foot in the door. And uh, Andrea Rossi is saying the people who buy his early one, even if it's bettered by the second, he'll give them an updating kit. Mm -hmm. Presumably it's cheap enough for him to do that. Um, and he, if he gets that top place, he'll want to keep it, because he's aware that China and Japan will copy the idea, patents or no patents. And he's only got a patent in Italy, which is worthless for a worldwide trade. So uh, I, I think uh, Andrea Rossi uh, has a good chance of getting to the big time, but my second bet would be Brilliwin. Um, and Eric, if he gets the American government to continue the funding they pulled from him and a lot of other people um, 10 years ago, which was not done, had anything to do with him, as they decided not to finance NASA for developing energy systems. But NASA have been developing cold fusion themselves. NASA have confirmed that cold fusion is a genuine thing. It's not a scam. It's not um, against physics. They know it works. It's just physics hasn't found out why. And they don't like to admit it. So uh, I think it's going to cause a, an avalanche effect. When this comes out, and they've got to accept generally that all the, the professionals, the advisors of government, were wrong in saying do it this way and not that, that's nonsense, it can't work. They're wrong. So uh, the peer review system has got to be uh, overhauled completely to allow this sort of development to surface in good time for the human race to make, take full advantage of it. So that's going to, and the, the electric universe theory will probably get rationalised into it for the same reason at the same time. So that's what I'm hoping will happen. Whether it will or not is in the lap of the gods. Uh, this, this is a power beneath space travel. Yes, um, that's one of the things that Eric Lerner mentions. And he, in fact, did a, a, a development project for NASA uh, some time ago. Uh, he's reached 1.8 billion degrees in temperature uh, with this system, so he could actually do uh, any of the possible focus fusion uh, reactions that he was asked to do. And uh, an iron engine is one of the things they've looked at. Uh, an iron pump is, is, uh, for a, a spaceship is one of the things that NASA has looked at. Mm -hmm. And if he produces a 5 megawatt one, then he can produce a, a bigger one. Well, the present one is only that size. <laughs> That's all. So make it that size, and it'll go up with the square of the diameter, the power it can produce. So, yes, and he, he says that travel to Mars would be reduced to about uh, two months. <laughs> so, yes. It's attempts at assassination by the oil industry. <laughs> uh, it, it, 
this whole area is totally fascinating to me. I, I'm used to looking at odd things, but the things that they're coming out with, that I probably learned enough that I, I could actually uh, make a, um, a, a fusion reactor, uh, the low energy one, myself. Because uh, I've been given far uh, easily enough clues. And the last thing I heard one week ago was an Italian high school physics master has actually put one on the web, uh, built with laboratory equipment and with a coefficient of performance of three, which is uh, Andrea Rossi's has a coefficient of performance of six times the energy going in. But he's done it with three, but not even using nickel, which all the others have used so far. So. Uh, apparently, um, tungsten is what he used. Looks like tungsten uh, nanoparticles. Maybe they were easier for him to get than nickel because there's probably a short supply of nickel with all the other people <laughs> using it at the moment. <laughs> so, if a high school can do it and uh, they're uh, allowing anyone to um, tap into their research, they say they're setting up a company and people, they want as many people as possible to be. Um, uh, shareholders in the company to minimise the chance of it being shut down because they want this energy to be available and not uh, suppressed as so many things have been in the past. Is there one last question? Plenty of opportunity during that, as it's a stand-up lunch, to talk further with uh, uh, any of our speakers. So over to you, gentlemen, and one lady.